Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Harrisburg Area Transportation Study Coordinating Committee meeting this uh, 24th of February, 2017. I'm Steve Naylor, I'm Vice Chairman and Prairie County Commissioner. I'm sending in for Jeff Haste, and we'll go around the table here for introductions. Uh, go ahead. Tim Reardon, Tri-County Regional Planning Commission. Casey Baxendale, Hats Planning Staff. Andrew Bomberger, Hats Planning Staff. Tom Benninger, Hats Planning Staff. Steve Depp, Hats Planning Staff. Diane Myers, Crew, Tri County Regional Planning Commission. Uh, Dan Walston, Federal Highways. Days Falling, Airport Authority. Sean Sanderson, DCED. <laughs> Skip Memmi, Dolphin County. Ron Drenovich, SDC. Tony Berger, Pendot District 8. Mike Kaiser, Pendot District 8. Larry Shifflett, Office of Planning. Adam Grimes, Pendot Central Office. Uh, Jim Herxler, Cumberland County Commissioner. Nathan Walker, Pendot District 8. Dorothy Manasivi, Kaiser Barbara. Todd Pegarillo, Hershey Trust. Dan Flint, Lower Allen Township. Tom Helm, Harrisburg Bicycle Club. Good morning. Bill Peterson, Center for Community Building. Bruce Crow, Office of Congressman Lou Barletta. Okay, thank you everybody. And, uh, we'll get started here with the uh, minutes, the uh, Coordinating Committee minutes, uh, December 16th, 2016. We need to action this. Uh, any comments? Uh, if not, uh, I have a motion to accept. So moved. Second, is there a second? Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Ayes have it. The technical committee meetings are there for your information. Uh, next on the uh, number three, the election of officers. Action we need here. Skip, I see your hand going up. Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to nominate uh, the existing uh, board of directors, Commissioner Jeff Tace as chairman. Commissioner Steve Naylor as Vice Chair and Jackie Parker as the Secretary. Okay. Is there uh, any other uh, comments to be addressed? If not, uh, do I have a second on that? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, tip modifications, uh, PennDOT. Administrative uh, action. Oh, okay. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, since our last coordinating committee meeting, which was on December 16th last year, a total of eight administrative modifications have been made to the 2017 Hats Highway Bridge tip. A few highlights I'll go over. Start with actions one and two. This is reducing the construction phase of the I-81 widening PA 581 merge lane project in 2019 and 2020 to meet the low bid amount. Combined total of 4579000 of state 581 funding is being returned to the highway reserve line item. That project involves approximately a two-mile widening for a third lane along I-81 northbound and 81 southbound, which connects the ramps between PA-114 interchange and the PA-581 interchange in Hamden and Silver Spring Township. And that project is currently underway. Uh, construction uh, completion is currently scheduled for May of next year. Actions 17 and 18 is advancing uh, funding for the Walden Avenue pedestrian upgrade project and returning savings in 2018 to the regional TAP line item. The savings is to match the low bid amount and that project was let back in December and is currently scheduled to begin sometime this spring. In last actions 19 through 21 adds $86,682 to the construction phase of the Duke Street bridge replacement project. Funding is available from the Highway Reserve and HATS SD Bridge Reserve line items in 2017 and 2018. That increase is for additional excavation work, foundation remediation, and additional backfill. Uh, since those are administrative modifications, those are shared for, for informational purposes only and no vote is required by the committee. I do have a few amendments. Um, we'll start with the highway and bridge tip amendments. Um, the first is for the Erford Road Bridge. Uh, that is for a $2,538,000 increase for the construction phase of that project. Funding is available from the Highway Reserve Line item in 2017, along with six de-obligations of funding. Uh, the increase is to meet the pre-bid estimate and is attributed to the use of accelerated bridge construction techniques, reconstruction of abutments, uh, additional maintenance and protection of traffic, and additional roadway construction for wider approaches along the 
along with pavement depth changes. Uh, Erford Road Bridge is scheduled to be let on April 6th. And the second amendment is for the Green Belt 39 Fort Hunter. Uh, this amendment is warranted due to a change in scope of that project, which includes uh, construction to the Green Belt on Linglestown Road. And that increase is for a total of $1,566,204 in 2017. Um, funding for that increase is available from 60 obligations of funds as well. And the Green Belt project from 39 to Fort Hunter is scheduled to be let this July. Uh, if there are any questions on any amendments or uh, actions, I'll try to answer them at this time. Okay. The two amendments to the highway bridge will need vote. Any comments? Questions? Make a motion to approve the amendments. Thank you, Jim. Is there a second to that? Second. Second, Skip. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Mm -hmm. And there is one more yeah. amendment. For, oh. Can I just uh, interrupt for sure. before we move on to the transit one? Also wanted to mention that um, along with the uh, Green Hunter Amendment that just passed, we also uh, recently did a modification to the Greenbelt Safety Improvements Project, which is um, uh, in, the, in addition to the Greenbelt 400 Project. Um, and you'll be seeing that modification at the next meeting. But we did actually increase the funding to that project as well. Um, and I believe both of those projects are due to be let this July and are advancing forward. So just wanted to add that uh, <coughs> on just uh, in anticipation of the next uh, meeting is that, that amendment will be, or that action will be a little while until we actually see it here at the meeting. Thank you, Thank you Tony. Thanks, Adam. Sure. That's it. Um, okay. One more. Amendment. Okay. So this is for the transit tip. Um, this is adding eighteen million dollars to the Harrisburg Transportation Center improvement project in twenty seventeen. Uh, that project includes the overall state of good repair, general renovations to improve the first floor space, uh, main waiting area, concourse, public restrooms, Amtrak offices, and the second and third floor tenant space and overall ADA compliance. Okay. We need action on that then. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Comments? If not, do I have a motion to approve? So move. All right. So, is there a second? Second. Second, Jim. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same. I say that. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. We'll move on to uh, program plan updates, congestion management. Uh, Tom? Yeah, thanks, Commissioner Naylor. Uh, congestion management process plan update, second plan advisory. Member uh, committee meeting was held uh, this past January 31st. Uh, the goal of the meeting was to provide a congestion profile of the region and discuss congested issues. Uh, the profile reviewed top uh, 100 congested corridors uh, in, the, in the region due to traffic delay. Uh, but it was explained to the committee we really need to drill down farther to look at the intersection and sub-corridor level at the congestion to actually help uh, uh, recommend improvements. So that's actually currently underway now. We're using travel time data as part of that uh, data analysis. Um, representation from CAT, District 8 and Commuter Services of PA discussed congestion issues and some strategies for mitigating. Uh, just kind of overall keeping in mind the goal of the process and the plan uh, is to identify the most congested corridors, intersections, sub corridors, and propose alternative strategies to mitigate in order to make investment decisions and ultimately integrate with the long range plan uh, and, the, and the TIP. So, having said that, next plan advisory meeting is scheduled for April, and we should be, more, we be able to provide to this committee a draft of the uh, most congested sub corridors, intersections, and a more detailed presentation of those of that analysis. Uh, more information on the plan update can be found on. Uh, the TCRPC, Tri tri county Regional Planning Commission website. <coughs> Click on the transportation menu, then on the congestion management process uh, tab. Meeting and presentation notes are available as well as interactive GIS web map showing some of the GIS congested layers that are, that are part of the analysis. Any questions on that? Thank you, Tom. Uh, Andrew, <laughs> Bike Ped Passenger Task Force. Thank you. Uh, after reviewing our draft uh, complete streets policy and doing some comparisons to what other NPOs in the general area have done. 
we decided to push back the development and expand the scope a little um, of our entire Complete Streets effort. Uh, the expanded scope will focus more on providing and developing uh, materials for municipalities to draft and enact their own ordinances, uh, as well as help them identify areas where the where the uh, projects are, are most needed. Um, our bike ped task force met this week, just on Wednesday. Um, at that meeting, we discussed the bike counts, which will be again held in May. Um, we've trimmed uh, the the location list has been trimmed again, so we're down to 32 of the most important locations in the region. Um, like I said, the, the counts will take place in May. Um, I'm working, we discussed groups to, to begin outreach to. Again, it's a 100% volunteer effort, so if anybody's interested, uh, let me know. Uh, we, I also received a, a copy of the Dolphin County Bicycle Transportation Map. Uh, at the task force meeting, we spent a significant amount of time reviewing that map, uh, talking about some of the uh, uses and, and problem areas that are identified on that map. Um, I, I, it's a great resource. If you have any interest in reviewing it or um, have any use for it, feel free to contact me. It will be on our website soon. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Casey? Thank you. Uh, the development of the regional freight plan is progressing really well. A freight stakeholder focus group meeting was held yesterday at Credic. Uh, we were able to gain input on regional issues and trends in the freight sector from multiple modes and perspectives. On March 7th, 8th, and 9th, there will be focus group meetings with the municipalities of each county. If you have any questions about the details of those meetings, let me know. You can see me after. Uh, the next meeting of the Freight Plan Advisory Committee is also set for March 23rd. The intersection study is also progressing well. Uh, there were field views conducted at each of the three intersections. HAT staff, the consultant team, PennDOT, and local officials and stakeholders were in attendance at each of those field views, and it gave the study team a chance to see the intersections firsthand and gain valuable insight into the truck issues that the boroughs are experiencing. Okay. Any other reports? Uh, the public participation plan? Yes. Um, the updated draft of the public participation plan is completed and the formal comment period is set to begin on March 6th and close on April 20th. The comment period will be advertised in the Harrisburg Patriot as well as Tri-County Regional Planning Commission's social media. The draft plan will be made available in hard copy format at Tri-County offices, the Perry County Planning Office, and the Cumberland County Planning <coughs> Office, and it is also currently available in digital format on the HATS website. A formal outreach opportunity for both the public participation plan as well as the regional growth management plan will be taking place on April 12th from 11.30 until 1 at Strawberry Square. Thank you, Casey. Steve Deck, a Riverland Safety Study. Uh, updates specifically related to the proposed convenience store that I think we've discussed uh, before that's to be going in diagonally across from Red Rabbit uh, site. The, uh, Developer did submit their traffic impact study to the district on February 1st. And I believe there should be, I think there's a copy of the site plan that's associated with that uh, in, in everybody's packet. You'll see that basically the, the biggest change in the original sketch, there was a uh, right in, right out driveway at the northern end of the site. That's been eliminated. And then they were proposing uh, a driveway at the southern end of the property that would allow left-hand ingress but right out only. Um, so that's that's what they came up with based on their impact study um, submitted February 1st. As I said, the, the district was looking to get comments uh, within three weeks to them. So I, I will say that, that we appreciated the district's comments in that they cited uh, addressing any comments that, that Tri-County had and they cited the Riverland study in saying that they were recommending or they were disallowing the left-hand ingress uh, based on the safety concerns that came out of that, that Riverland study. So we responded so that they had our comments and there's a copy of the letter that I pulled together for that. 
Uh, and in a nutshell, it basically <coughs> says that, that we agreed that left-hand ingress uh, is a safety concern. It should not be allowed. And we also said at the bottom that uh, we were recommending that PennDOT use this opportunity to pursue the median barrier that we had discussed through this section uh, of it uh, for that portion of the corridor, uh, trying to balance uh, economic development and, and safety concerns through that section of roadway. Um, so I, I have not, we did submit that to the, uh, to the developer's engineer. I have not received a response yet, uh, but uh, we'll see how that continues to unfold. But I think so far so good uh, in terms of the process. That area is all Reed Township, Dalton County? Correct. No, I, I probably just real briefly add next week we're actually going up to Watts Township to talk to representatives from New Buffalo, Watts, and I believe Reed um, to kind of continue the discussion for the section of the roadway that goes up past New Buffalo in terms of land use controls and other things that could be put into place uh, to make sure that that section of roadway uh, doesn't become a similar safety concern. So by the next meeting, I'll be able to update you on how that discussion went. Thank you, Steve. Uh, next one on the agenda is hats, and uh, Tim will handle that in the annual report. Yes, in your packet is a draft annual report of the activities of, of the HATS program for 2016. The technical committee has recommended to the coordinated committee um, to go ahead and distribute this pending any comments. We have made some changes from the technical committee version. Uh, I'd like to say give you guys a week or so to look at it. If there are no comments received, uh, we would like to go ahead and distribute this. It will be distributed electronically. It will be on the website. And uh, we will need action to do that. Okay. If there's no comments, I'd entertain a motion to uh, approve that. To occur. So moved. All right. Is there a second? Second. Second, Skip. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Project development process. Uh, Casey? <coughs> Thank you. Uh, there are no new projects on the project tracking table. The tracking table is included in your packet just for informational purposes. Okay. And we also have uh, B. Hatch letter to Norfolk Southern. We need action. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, as I understand, uh, this was reviewed and approved by the uh, technical committee, um, and I did uh, have a hand in helping to draft this letter, uh, as Commissioner Hayes had requested at the last HATS meeting. Um, got the information from <coughs> Lower Allen Township, you know, with respect to the difficulties, and I was just flabbergasted. <coughs> by the fact that Lower Allen Township, after receiving tentative okay from Norfolk Southern, mm -hmm. expended $130,000 of, uh, of their township taxpayers' uh, resources uh, to be told 10 years later that no, Norfolk Southern objects to the project. Um, now, I understand there are other issues that we have had over the years with respect to uh, Norfolk Southern's um, indifference or lack of participation <coughs> with respect to working in a cooperative fashion. Um, but this is kind of like uh, this situation with Lower Allen Township is pretty egregious as far as I'm concerned. And it's one of the reasons why government gets a bad name. But, um, you know, Norfolk Southern is kind of like an entity unto themselves. They're not government, apparently. Uh, so, uh, in any event, the letters prepared, I would, uh, I'm more than happy to make a motion to approve it and to have it signed by uh, uh, Commissioner Haste when uh, at his earliest opportunity. And I will add that Commissioner Haste has reviewed the letter and is okay with it, but I will also note that at the technical committee, the city of Harrisburg voted against the letter. Uh, they feel that they have had a a halfway decent relationship with some of the projects that they have done with Norfolk Southern and did not want to put themselves in a position to jeopardize that relationship. They're not at the table today, but I think it should be noted that Harrisburg City has objected to or had voted no to the letter. No objection in sending it, but uh, voted no on the letter. Okay. Skip? 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second the motion. And uh, Mr. Turner from Perry County isn't here to uh, voice his opinion, but I think we all understand what it is. Uh, Norfolk Southern has not been a good partner. Uh, they only appear at these meetings when they need something. Uh, they do not participate or try to mitigate any impacts that any of their projects will create within the district. Uh, they expect the townships to roll over uh, and, and, and do exactly what they say. So as Commissioner Hertzler pointed out, there are many, many, many projects that Norfolk Southern uh, refused to be a partner with municipalities and or this organization and somehow some way we need to put them on notice again because this isn't the first time that we've done this but again put them on notice that the Harrisburg area transportation study this MPO is not happy with the, with the way they treat uh, the MPO and its participating municipalities. So with that, I'll second the motion and, 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 and hopefully let's see if this brings any response. Okay. All in favor of sending the letter uh, as uh, transcribed, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> no. Ayes have it. Okay. I guess we'll move on to the uh, status reports, PennDOT transportation, no, uh, PennDOT excuse first. me, PennDOT. PennDOT. Thank you. Um, just have a few <coughs> updates uh, on projects. Uh, <coughs> calendar, okay. calendar tells us it's winter, but uh, temperatures are <laughs> <laughs> telling us something different. Uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously, if this trend continues, uh, we are getting requests from contractors to get started a little earlier, and, and obviously we're going we're gonna to do that. Uh, probably the, the newest project that we didn't talk about before uh, would be the uh, Spring Creek uh, SR743, uh, right adjacent to Hershey Park there at the uh, Zoo America. Um, you know, we had a, a small closure earlier uh, in 2016. Uh, there was some utility work, and then I believe the, uh, the actual closure occurred here just about a week ago. And uh, we hope to have that job done by uh, by July. Uh, of course, that's going to have a big impact right there at the park. But uh, there's a lot of coordination with that. Uh, we we did talk. You know, we're progressing along on both of our projects on I-81. You know, Cumberland County and, and Dauphin County. Um, you know, Adam had alluded to the, the one a little bit earlier. Uh, it looks like both of those will be completed in <coughs> May and May and June of, of 2018. Um, Hemp Brothers has the project here on the, on the East Shore, and uh, Blooming Glen has the project over in Cumberland County. Um, work continues on I-83 overhead bridges as well. Uh, you know, I think we had a very, very good first year on, on that project. Um, Elmerton Avenue Bridge was opened. Uh, got a lot of work done on the abutments there at the 22, or the pier, I should say, on 22. Uh, focus moving ahead will be uh, in this construction season will be Union Deposit Road and then come back and do uh, 22. The work on 22, I believe, was in, uh, uh, needed to relocate Verizon facilities. So while we're down at the uh, uh, Union Deposit, Verizon will be in moving, moving utilities on 22. You know, all these are uh, important. Uh, we do have, uh, we opened up bids last week on uh, PA 283, which includes modifications to the turnpike interchange and reconstruction uh, of 283 from that point down to the uh, Lancaster County line. I don't recall the bid from out of $89 million. Uh, and again, trying to hem all this in with the uh, uh, project that we have programmed in, in 2018 to reconstruct and widen. I-83 here starting south of Union Deposit over to uh, I-81, which, uh, you know, last time I, I saw the estimate on that was about $133 million. So, you know, pouring a lot of uh, work into the interstates, uh, you know, the capital area here is, as is needed. 
Um, maybe some of the other projects, uh, you know, we, we've got a lot of questions about 230, uh, the bridge down there at the end of Middletown. Looks like that work should be done uh, later this spring. Um, com completed some of the stage two work. That's, you know, we tried to keep a lane open during construction on that. There were some issues on that job, there's no doubt about it. Uh, worked, worked through those with the contractor. Um, flip side, you know, the work on uh, 322, 422 Expressway went real well. Um, you know, majority of that work is completed. Uh, just working with the contractor on our final punch list and uh, installation of signs. So I think that pretty much takes care of the, uh, the project reports. Uh, any questions? Thank you, Mike. Move on to uh, state transportation, Ron. Uh, yes, I'm uh, pleased to be here. Um, I'd like to couple, cover a couple, three items. Uh, first, uh, the SDC had their first meeting last Thursday uh, and approved the uh, transportation performance report that's available online. Um, I would encourage you to take a look at it. There, it uh, uh, brings a, uh, emphasizes the status of everything and where we're doing well, where we're not, uh, where things need to be done, and. There's a lot of areas that are marginal and there continues to be needs there. But the, the report itself is very interactive online, so there's a, a number of uh, links that you can uh, take a look at that uh, bring you up to speed on what's, what's happening. Uh, so I think this is the third year that we put out this transportation performance report, uh, but, but worth a look. Uh, secondly, um, uh, PennDOT has uh, what they call their um, Transportation Innovation Council, and that report is also available online. And, and that's not just talking about uh, things that they're looking at for, for innovation, but actually things have been, that have been implemented in the last year. And it's interesting to see uh, um, uh, new, new pavement surfacing for, for uh, uh, traction and, and, and roughness, and a lot of things are being implemented in different places. Uh, also worth a look. Uh, the third item is the uh, next uh, update of the 12-year plan, which <laughs> everybody goes through every two years, and that cycle is just beginning. I think you may be aware of that, but the first phase of that <coughs> is the online uh, uh, um, uh, comment period that they can we can gain data from uh, from across the state. Uh, last year, I think there were some 15,000 comments that came in through that. Um, some are relevant. Uh, there is a goal to make more of them relevant to get people to really present things that are not just uh, a gripe here and there, but actual uh, items that, uh, that we can address. And there's a lot of those that come through regardless. Uh, that begins on March the 6th and it will run through, um, through April 19th. Uh, right in the middle of that on March uh, 21st there will be a second part of that is a uh, open public online public meeting that will be uh, uh, Center here in Harrisburg, but it reaches across the state. That also is um, a, a fairly good. I mean, you get a number of calls in on that, uh, and then people get we become familiar with the opportunities to, to, to get into the online comment period to provide more detailed information. So, if there's a way to get that information out from here, uh, uh, it would be good to um, gain as much input as we can from the general public because there's just nuggets that pop out here and there and things that we don't know about and you might not even know about. So worth the effort. Uh, and that all comes on, um, on, a, on a link that's called uh, Talk PA Transportation, and if some, anybody key that in, that gets you into all of these different uh, items uh, that, that you can look at online. Um, so I'm here to, to relay that to you, that, uh, that uh, the last 12 year program was finalized in December, so that uh, we'll take a look for the next, next two years coming out again. Um, the, the STC is active and we do meet with the, with the uh, MPOs like that, so it's, uh, it's a good place to, to hear what's going on and to gain input. And anything I can take back, I'm willing to do that as well to, to the State Transportation Commission. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Any questions to Ron? Otherwise, all right. Thank you. <clears throat> Go to uh, FHWA, Dan. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's good to be back in hats. Um, for those of you, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, uh, Miss Kathy Dempsey did retire. She didn't change her mind. 
So she stuck to a word and she retired at the end of December. <laughs> so, um, so now I have the opportunity and privilege to work with ATS again. So um, I'll be here for a while. Um, we, we are kind of like in limbo with the hiring freeze, uh, you know, for the new administration. So um, we cannot hire anyone at this point. However, we do have a new environmental person that, that was able to squeak through the various timelines that we're working with them. And, um, but, you know, it's good to have our new environmental specialist aboard, but um, there's nothing that's going to change with District 8. So John Crum will continue to be uh, the environmental specialist here in, in District 8. Um, so it's good to be back. Uh, I do have a couple of things that I just wanted to uh, hand out. Uh, <coughs> it's not too cumbersome as you take all these things out. Um, but what's coming your way is the notification letter uh, for the upcoming certification review. It's hard to believe that four years have passed already. Um, but this May uh, 10th and 11th, we have tentatively scheduled the next certification review that's going to be held right here in this very room. And um, so we welcome any participation uh, for that certification review uh, from the MPO members and also um, also from the public. So please reach out to your stakeholders and uh, we will continue to work with, uh, with Diane and Casey, Tim, all the staff uh, to, to develop the agenda um, so we can transmit that out to um, the MPO members. And, um, so um, please consider that. Mark that on your calendars if, 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 you, don't, uh, if you don't have that already. Uh, the next um, item that I passed out uh, was related to one of our new uh, guides that FHWA has, and it's really pertaining to building links, okay, between safety and safety planning. So what the engineers, what the planners do, the practitioners do with safety. And I think this really dovetails in nicely with the strategic highway uh, performance plan that is soon to be finalized by the department. And uh, there's been a lot of, lot of hard work, a lot of sweat equity into that. We had a lot of good comments uh, that went into that plan and it's soon to be released. Um, but this, this kind of dovetails in nicely with it, especially with what the MPO is doing in regards to safety planning, going out and doing your roadside safety audits, doing your safety assessments, um, you know, complementing the work that Tom's doing with the congestion management process. Uh, so, so it all relates and, um, and hopefully this, would, uh, this particular guidance would be uh, beneficial to uh, MPO staff, uh, PennDOT personnel, and other safety stakeholders. You know, as that uh, as that rolls out. Uh, the second piece uh, pertains. The third piece actually pertains to a workshop. Okay, regarding incorporating bicycle design in resurfacing projects. Okay, that is going to be held on April the 25th at DVRPC. DVRPC has worked with our headquarters office and also our consultant tool design group uh, to hold one of 15 here with here in the state and DVR Philadelphia was selected as that location. And um, so we're, we're asking that if there's anyone who has strong interest uh, in looking at those different design techniques um, as projects are you know, being developed, uh, please uh, work with me and I can also get you in touch with the right folks if you're so inclined to attend. Unfortunately, you do gotta contend with the skull kill traffic at that time in the morning because it starts at 8.30 and it doesn't adjourn until 4.30. So you might be stuck out there for a little bit, um, but hopefully, I, you know. That's what the train's for, then. That doesn't make the news. Yeah, you're right. So <laughs> take the train, don't drive. <laughs> or fly, if you can get out of Capital City Airport and go in the <laughs> And then take Uber. Uh, but anyway, is that the name of it? Um, so I just wanted to hand out those three items, uh, you know, for your information. And uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, uh, to contact me. Thank you, Dan. Yep. Sarah, Dave. Sure. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have uh, year-end statistics for uh, 2016. We had a good year. Passenger traffic was up 3%. Uh, cargo tonnage was up almost 3%. Uh, so overall, a good year. Uh, Allegiant, our low-cost carrier, continues to fly to uh, Orlando, uh, Tampa St. Pete, and uh, Punta Gorda. They will be bringing back uh, seasonal service to uh, Myrtle Beach uh, later this spring, and uh, we were notified by American that effective uh, March 1st, the Boston service will be upgraded 
from a turboprop aircraft to uh, a 50 passenger regional jet. So that will be a, a nice uh, change. We have a number of uh, construction projects that will be occurring at the airport this year. Uh, the primary one is the uh, rehabilitation of the runway will start. That will be a three year project. Uh, we'll start uh, in April and finish up probably early October for this year's portion of the work. Uh, and then that will continue over the next several years. Uh, we also have some private development that will be uh, taking place. Uh, the first of those projects uh, is uh, by Select Medical. Uh, they're going to be constructing a new 25,000 square foot hangar. They've uh, just awarded that contract and uh, plan to start March 1st. And uh, that will be followed by uh, construction of a hotel and then another office hangar complex by our fixed based operator ad flight that will go up on the site of the uh, old terminal building. So, okay. All right. Thanks, Dave. And Sean, DCED? No report. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, legislator's report, uh, Barletta's office? Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, nothing new to report this, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dent's office? Uh, just that the congressman now sits on the Appropriations Subcommittee of Transportation, Housing, and Urban Development and Related Agencies. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Go to local reports. Uh, City of Harrisburg. Nobody here? No. Other municipalities? Anybody have anything to say? Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I'm Vice Borough, and we have a big concern about Route 230 where Eisenhower Boulevard meets it. The, um, the blacktop is now worn away, it is now into the concrete. The concrete is chipping away, and being that we get a lot of um, truck traffic that comes in off of the turnpike, it comes in off of 283, and comes down into High Spire to sometimes just going to the airport. They don't use the airport connector or up to Steel Town <coughs> or wherever. And we are deeply concerned about this because it is down into the concrete now. We'd like to have somebody come down and look at it. I'm willing to meet with anybody. Uh, as the borough manager is. I have photos if anybody wants to see. We did have some pictures um, of what the damage is. And um, I know you have the five-year plan and the 10-year plan. We'd like to know if you have about a six-month plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, it really, being that it has gone down into the concrete is what really is, is concerning us right now. And we also have some of the drain sewers that are really low. And people have hit them. We've had uh, an accident where somebody actually hit one that uh, sent the uh, car up into a house. And those are things that need to be looked at as well. So if anybody wants to see pictures, I do have pictures that, you know, show what the, the concerns that we have. Okay. Uh, thank you for your comments. I saw a lot of pencils being pushed there and notes being made. Uh, Penn, do I have any comments? That you yeah, have I, I think uh, we'll, we'll certainly be happy to meet out in the field. Uh, you know, I know that section we did a micro overlay, I think, a number of years ago because of the curb and sidewalk and drainage issues along there. Um, in fact, that is a concrete roadway. We have some limited options there. But, uh, uh, you, you know, the one challenge we do have, and I mentioned this earlier with the uh, $89 million, 283 uh, reconstruction, is the amount of funding that's coming out of uh, and HPP funds for hats to pay for that. What you got to do is look at your your uh, tip, and uh, that's going to take away from some of our resurfacing areas, you know, efforts I should say, while we we fund that project. But uh, you know, we have maintenance forces too that can go out there and, and help out. So uh, probably we'll, we'll get someone from our design staff and maintenance when we get there. Okay, they can contact. It contact me through the office, okay. or I can give you yeah, well, just give your number my card. Yeah, um, yeah, give me a card after me. Okay, all right, and Great. then you, you want to see the pictures? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you for your comments. Any other municipalities? Dan? That's it? Okay. Okay, Tri-County Regional Planning, uh, the Regional uh, Growth Management. Uh, Andrew? Thank you. 
Uh, we're progressing with the plan. We have a steering committee meeting coming up on March 21st. Uh, we will also have a public outreach meeting or a public outreach session that Casey uh, discussed earlier, uh, kind of in conjunction with the public participation plan. Um, that's April 12th at Strawberry Square from 11.30 to 1. Uh, the outreach will continue after that by county uh, in late April through early May. And we anticipate adoption of the RGMP at the June or the July 27th Tri-County Regional Planning Commission meeting. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Andrew? Okay, thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Diane Myers, Regional Connections. Thank you. Uh, the latest <coughs> Regional Connections project is the bus optimization project with the city of Harrisburg and CAT. Uh, we have a contract prepared. Uh, the city is working with their consultant that they selected to finalize the contract and that work should be beginning shortly. would want to note that uh, PennDOT made the, the award notices for the supplemental funds for the next round um, and thank you PennDOT for awarding another round of regional connections. They also awarded funds for exits 84, 48, 49 on Interstate 81 and the cat routing um, for planning efficiency. <coughs> We're working on the uh, UPWP adjustments to get that, that funds flowing. So okay. Any those questions? Will start soon. Thank you, Diane. Any other questions for Diane? Okay. <coughs> I'd just like to uh, thank uh, this uh, board and the uh, PennDOT for the uh, work that we've had in Prairie County up there. That's the uh, our bridge repairs, uh, the ones that are completed, the ones that are uh, ongoing now. The park and ride at Newport uh, is greatly used. Uh, we could use the one like you have at 114 up there in the western Prairie County, I think, uh, because our people are so independent. Once they get close to the line or the river, they're not going to jump in a car. I don't think that's just my personal opinion. but. That one at 34 uh, up there at Newport is, uh, was overflowing, and with that expansion of about 100%, uh, it's very well used. So I want to uh, thank everybody at this table and PennDOT especially for that help. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I just want to give everyone an early save the date, uh, May 4th, 1130, at the Sheraton Harrisburg Hershey Tri-County Regional Planning Commission will hold its annual event. Keynote speaker at that will be PennDOT's very own Leslie Richards. Um, she will be speaking about the PennDOT Connects policy, <coughs> and we're hopeful to have a uh, good crowd for her to speak to. So save that date. Uh, you will hear more about it uh, later. Star Wars. Day. Yeah. <laughs> May the fourth. Very good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, un under other business, if that's where we are. Yes. Um, I just want to say I, I, I sympathize and share uh, the thoughts of the lady from High Spire uh, with respect to our planning process and how long it seems to take to get things done. Um, and that's where I think, you know, PennDOT and what we do here, you know, we need to be nimble, and I think that we have done that, you know, in the past. Um, but I'm going to share, uh, while I realize PennDOT's moving forward, a number of major projects throughout the region. Um, a lot that wouldn't be possible without, you know, uh, Act 89 and the and the funding legislation that was that was overwhelmingly approved by a uh, a number of um, courageous uh, state lawmakers uh, a number of years ago. Um, we still had a number of lawmakers who just voted no because they just vote no. Uh, but I but in any event, new funding resources are available. Um, you know. We hope to see the Congress, you know, do something in terms of, you know, boosting funding uh, for transportation here, um, hopefully in the next uh, uh, couple years. But having said all that, um, I want to express a little frustration, and on behalf of the constitu my constituents in Cumberland County, on behalf of the many municipalities that are the member of the Capital Region Council of Governments, um, it was last April that the Cumberland County Board of Commissioners uh, passed a resolution, and uh, if you'll you don't mind your, your indulgence, I'd appreciate it. But let me read it here for the record. Um, <clears throat> it was last April. It said, whereas the office of the Cumberland County Coroner 
has confirmed that four lives have already been tragically lost in crossover crashes on Interstate 81 uh, just in our county within the first quarter of 2016, whereas vehicular accidents, injuries, and deaths have become all too common along this critically important and often congested interstate thoroughfare. And whereas because of the ever-increasing volume of heavy truck and other traffic on Interstate 81, there is a pressing need for our federal and state officials to focus greater attention on the allocation of necessary resources to widen Interstate 81 to three lanes in both directions in the capital region through Cumberland County and to the Maryland border for the flow of interstate commerce and for the safety of the region's traveling public. And whereas in the interim, immediate steps should be taken to do all that is possible to enhance public safety along Interstate 81. And whereas the Federal Highway Administration has identified a range of median barrier systems to prevent crossover crashes on high-speed corridors, which often result in more severe head-on collisions, serious injury, and death. And whereas, according to the most recent Harrisburg Area Transportation Study um, for the region, head-on or crossover crashes have spiked uh, by 84 percent in Cumberland County from 62 to 114 during the five-year reporting period of 2010 through 2014. And whereas median barriers to prevent crossover crashes uh, have been erected along most of I-76, the Pennsylvania Turnpike, throughout Cumberland County and most of Pennsylvania, but very few exist in the grassy medians along Interstate 81 in Cumberland County. And whereas the State Department of Transportation has engaged in other highway safety improvement uh, in the area, including the $20 million Rock Slope Safety Improvement Project along 11 and 15, just uh, south of Marysville to prevent rocks from falling onto the highway and potentially vehicles below. And whereas these projects are important, but there are others that need immediate attention and prioritization as well. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Cumberland County Board of Commissioners, on behalf of the traveling public in our county, calls upon our state and federal transportation officials and elected representatives to take immediate action to prioritize the installation of safety median barriers um, to prevent crossover crashes on Interstate 81. Be it further resolved that serious consideration be given to both lower cost uh, cable bar barrier and higher cost rigid barrier systems, uh, whichever are determined to be the most cost effective uh, and necessary to protect the public's safety and guard against crossover wrecks, serious injury, and loss of life. Okay, that resolution was sent to the governor, was sent to the secretary of the Department of Transportation, uh, was sent to, I think, uh, our elected state and federal officials, uh, and it was also sent to HATS. Mr. And Commissioner, was that sent to Renee Siegel? Was that sent to FHWA? It it was sent to the, uh, I, I don't know, I will check on that. But in any it's event, federal, okay, so I just want to you know, in any event, um, um, we also, the you know, Capital Region Council of Governments brought up again on Monday evening, and the question is, what's being done? Capital Region Council of Governments represents 41 municipalities in this area. Um, last October the 19th, our entire County Board of Commissioners had a meeting with Secretary Richards at the PennDOT's main office. And, um, you know, we expressed our interest in having this, this addressed. Um, that was four months ago. Okay. Um, I, at the last meeting, I talked with, uh, with Mike about this, about, you know, what are we doing? Can we get moving forward? And I did have a conversation with Mike here uh, earlier today as to, you know, how we can begin to uh, address this situation. But I know Jim Turner had asked what's the, you know, what's the status at the last, at the last HATS meeting. So I'm trying to be respectful here. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we need to get something done here. 
the same day we met with the Secretary of Transportation, there was a horrific crossover crash on I-81 by coincidence. Fiery wreck. Uh, at least one individual was flown by lifeline to, to Hershey, and two others ended up in the hospital. Fortunately, I, uh, no one died from that, act, that wreck. Uh, but, you know, I think that we need to finally act, and I don't know how we get to getting about action uh, before we lose too many other lives on Interstate 81. So uh, I'm hoping that this can be uh, prioritized. I'm hoping that we can move forward and get something done here. And quite frankly, I don't, I don't know who else we need to talk to. This is, this is a serious <laughs> issue. It, is being, it has been brought to the attention from the locally elected officials, from our emergency responders, from your county commissioners. We need to get something done here. Okay, thanks for sharing, Jim. Mike, do you have comments? Sure, sure. Well, thanks for the comments. Uh, I think as I explained before, uh, we have been reviewing this uh, and bidding projects. I think each year for the last four or five years, We've had district-wide uh, cable medium barrier guide rail contracts. Um, I'm not going to talk specific dates, but I know we did a short section down by Shippensburg as one of the uh, last packages. Uh, good news is, is we have another one that's uh, scheduled to be let here in July. Uh, that will include work on uh, I-81 in Cumberland County as well. It will also include work in uh, Franklin County and, and Dauphin County. Um, you know, after the letter, uh, of course, uh, and, and uh, again, just take up, I'm going to keep this on the high road here because I think we all agree we are moving forward, but we did let the contract on 81 between uh, 114 and 581, and that additional lane there will uh, kind of require us to seal off the median. It won't be well, like you see with the cable guide rail at other locations, but uh, so that addresses an area from 114 to, to 581. Yeah, again, I, I don't want this to sound, uh, I, I'm just, I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, you know, three years before Act 89 was passed, the Bipartisan Commission said we needed to invest three and a half billion additional dollars a year. And with Act 89, our total construction dollars are, are two and a half uh, annual program. Uh, as I said before, this is a symptom of the volumes we have out there. Uh, when I say that, if you get north of uh, 581 in the three-lane section, we have much less issues there, uh, minus, again, when you get to the interchange with, with 15. And again, a lot of the crossover accidents and data, when you look at it, uh, they are linked to uh, on and off ramps because that's where you have a lot of activity. So, do you have another cable guide rail contract coming out? We're defining those areas. Um, another positive here uh, on the uh, IM plan tip, we have uh, on the second four years, which again, that'll be updated now with the 2019 effort. We do have a major rehab on uh, I-81 from 233 to 34. Um, that'll give us an opportunity to uh, also look at that entire stretch. And, and here, here's the issue. And, it's, it's just something we're going to have to try to deal with here, but the cable systems that we're putting in the median are, are meant for very, very flat medians. When that first came out, they wanted a 10 to 1 slope on those, those medians. We don't have 10 to 1 slopes in Pennsylvania. They modified them. I think they added a rail, uh, a cable element to it. And now we're comfortable about 6 to 1 slope of installing those. Uh, once you get over 6 to 1, uh, between one to four and six to one, uh, one to six, whatever we're going to say there. Um, that puts us in an area to analysis. And now the problem is, in outside of Carlisle area, our slopes are all steeper than, so those those systems will not work. Uh, so you're going to have to go as as you recommended there, maybe a more rigid system. That's going to take some grading in the uh, median, uh, which again would be an option with a major. Uh, project like we have programmed for the second four years so we're committed to take a look at that uh, my recommendation is is you know uh, I'll share the details with this you know maybe we can get together mid late March with the commissioners or a couple other folks but 
I think everyone in this room is uh, focused on reducing fatalities across the board. All, of them, you know, uh, we're trending. Uh, we we've done very well through 2015, but like the rest of the nation, 2016 numbers have gone up. Certainly recognize that. Yeah. Uh, it's gone up because the total vehicle miles traveled have gone up. Uh, I will well also today. say my concern would be with the volumes we have in Cumberland County that we got to be very, very careful. And let's keep in mind this hasn't started overnight. Since I've been with the department, any freight that comes out of Delaware comes up. I hear it from Route 30 in Lancaster. Uh, they'll come up, they'll use 283, they'll go back down I 81, hop on the turnpike, and you just saved yourself, you know, about half the states in tolling. So that's a that's a known factor there. We gotta we gotta consider. But once we have a, a barrier in there, especially you know, in the Carlisle area, my concern is, is our secondary crashes that are going to result from regularly backups because now that you have an accident, um, you will be down to one lane very quickly, more, more frequently than we are today. Um, and if you all recall, if you've been here when we rebuilt sections of 81 here from Dauphin to Lebanon County line, that's where we had severe accidents. We were out there trying to do the widening, taking I-81 down in one lane. Again, I, I hope today, I think with some of the technology available, 511, cars, you know, have information on for congestions. Uh, we haven't quite had that experience that we had before, but, you know, we, we are looking at it. And, and again, I, I want to be careful here. I'll get into more details at our meeting, but, uh, you know, again, our job here, and I think at this table and at PennDOT and county commissioners, is we got to try to reduce all fatalities. Uh, in Pennsylvania, our number one cause of fatalities is still, and has been for a number of years, run off the road, hit fixed objects. Telephone poles and trees are tops. So if I can save a few lives on I-81, absolutely, we're going we're gonna to make sure we try to do that. The balance here is I don't want to flip statistics on a chart that shows instead of a crossover fatality, I have a rear end accident fatality. That's the balance we have. I think we all agree in this room if we had two and a half billion dollars extra, we'd have a third lane from Maryland line I-78. So we're, we are working on it. Be happy to share some of this information. Uh, and, and again, my commitment would be twofold here today that We'll, we'll grab as much as we can in Cumberland County with the medium barrier project that we're going to bid in July, um, explain the areas where we can't, and then, again, keep in mind we do have that second project uh, which will give us the ability to do some earthwork and things like that in the medium with that job that's on the IM plan, and uh, that'll get us pretty close to uh, sealing off the corridor. Mark, Thank you, Mike, I, for the update. Yeah, uh, I, I appreciate I appreciate your uh, your comments and response. I uh, uh, look forward to working with you, and, and maybe we can get uh, get this moving along. One one thing I would I would say is when we look at and what floors me is the expense of some of these projects. Okay, um, and we know we have limited resources, and, and I think what we're suggesting uh, is we need to prioritize some of these things. You know to you know, determine how we can get the best bang for the buck. Right. right. And we know, we know, we know three lanes all the way to the Maryland border isn't going to happen tomorrow. Right. It should have happened yesterday, though. <laughs> uh, but in the interim, you know, I think this is something we need, we need to provide for. And we know, we know that, you know, from the incidents, again, from our first responders, um, we know that those, those crossover crashes are the most Horrific crashes, high speeds head on. Right. Yeah, you're uh, correct. And it, and it, you know, I, I understand there's all kinds of issues, but please let's not study this and analyze it to death. No. We got it. We got to do something. You know, again, the only, the only study we're doing is, uh, you, you know, there's guidelines out there that provide a median for recovery. So you can't run blind into this and start putting <laughs> barrier down the line. Uh, you have to try to tie that to some recent activity like crash data. Otherwise, you're in jeopardy of getting a lawsuit because 
someone hits the guide rail, bounces out on the road and hits somebody else. So that, that's the balance. And, and by the way, again, you're, you're correct. I want to be 100% make sure you agree that crossover accidents uh, do not end well. We know that. However, 81 and 83 have by far much lower crash rates than our other facilities. Now, that's, I think I mentioned before, we have, this is hard to wrap your head around sometime, over 9 million miles traveled daily on I-81 in the corridor here in Pennsylvania. So when you look at the crash locations and we look at where we focus our uh, HSIP funds, you know, Route 11 in Cumberland County comes up as a higher crash rate than, than I-81. Different, different, though, again, when a vehicle makes it all the way across the median, it, it does not end well because of the speed. So okay. uh, I think you'll see in March that we had a plan. We have been working on it to be able to update everybody. Good. Look forward to doing that. Thank you. Okay. No other business? Oh, yeah, I'd like to bring up one other thing. Um, in, in the transportation performance report, the indication is that the local bridges are still a major problem in the, in the, uh, in the state, and uh, which is out of Pendant's realm, other than they're connected to them. But Northampton County is, has just uh, put out 33 bridges in a pre P3 project for local bridges. And I, I think it's worth watching that to see how that goes to and these are bridges that are 20 feet long and longer, local bridges. I think it's worth watching with how that's going in Northampton County to see if that's a possibility for consideration in, in, in our region here for local local bridge issues. Um, and it's the first use of P3 outside of the department itself. And it should be, uh, it's worth looking at. So, and it's, left, it's been left, so it's going. Okay. Thank you. If no other business at this point, we'll adjourn the meeting and let you go out and enjoy a spring day here. <laughs>